Russia loses control of dominance over Black Sea due to Ukrainian drones. While Russians have made gains on land, they may as well have lost their dominance and security in the Black Sea for the foreseeable future. According to Kyiv Post media outlet, Ukraine's special services aren't slowing down. In June, they sank a Saturn-type tugboat and struck multiple speedboats at once. Their weapon of choice is the combined drone attack, the David to Russia's Goliath, and now the backbone of Ukraine's Black Sea strategy. The Russian Navy's sphere of influence in the Black Sea has been significantly reduced and the whole world can see this today. Andriy Yusov, spokesperson for Ukraine's defense intelligence, told the Kyiv Independent, Russia began the war with a formidable Black Sea fleet and all the Ukrainian ports in Crimea it seized in 2014, including the Ukrainian vessels that were docked there at the time. With this, Russia had the option to bombard cities, land troops and block all sea exports. This capability to project power was a key factor in the peninsula annexation. Ukraine didn't have anything that could be called an actual navy. But now Ukraine is using new tactics against Russian ships. The tactics have evolved too, from simple swarm techniques to combined strikes and different types of air and seaborne units working in unison. Kirill Mikhailov from the Conflict Intelligence Group said that the Ukrainians learned how to use one drone or group of drones to break gaps in Russian defenses for the others to slip through. A single attack might include breakthrough groups to tie up or take out enemy defenses and several strike groups hitting the main target from air and sea to do most of the damage while support or observation units lurk out of sight nearby. Ukrainian drone strikes now resemble classic combined arms naval stroke amphibious operations except remote controlled. He said Russia's admirals are failing to keep up with these changes as their mentality is circumscribed by their wealth of legacy equipment. They'd rather try to make their old stuff work than scratch start a parallel development program into naval drones. Ukraine is continuing to innovate, constantly upgrading their designs with the latest generation of Magura, the V5, put to water in recent months. Ukraine has also unveiled a new boat-type drone called the Stalker 5, which is designed to operate more within the river environment of the Dnipro. It has a larger carrying capacity, which would allow it to evacuate the wounded or be fitted with a very big bomb to deliver to the enemy. Other non-Black Sea players are also closely following events in the Black Sea, some with obvious concern, others with undisguised interest. Kirill Mikhailov said, Houthis threatened to sink the 100,000-ton U.S. aircraft carrier Dwight Eisenhower in the Red Sea. The Houthis have threatened to sink the 100,000-ton U.S. aircraft carrier Dwight D. Eisenhower in the Red Sea and even claimed to have hit it with drones or missiles. These threats have caused little alarm given the disparity between the military on one side and the state-of-the-art nuclear-powered carrier and its escort fleet on the other. Forbes reports. The publication noted that the idea that the Houthis could cause real damage to an American aircraft carrier, let alone sink it, seems far-fetched and unlikely. The Houthis are the epitome of a makeshift force, relying on garage-built drones, truck-mounted missiles, and crewless kamikaze speedboats. They are extremely difficult to attack in their rugged mountain fortresses and urban retreats. But being hard to dislodge does not make them an effective offensive force, and armored warships with missile defenses and damage control systems are far harder to sink than merchant ships, the article says. According to the publication, at least 12 missile hits are needed to sink an aircraft carrier. At the same time, the Russian source top war media outlet for 2019 cites an even higher figure, suggesting that one to three missiles will cause superficial damage that can be easily repaired, six to eight will cause serious damage, and at least 20 missiles will be needed to destroy them. If we follow the rules of veteran Chuck Hill, where you sink an aircraft carrier, you need to place half a kilogram of bombs or shells on the target for every ton of the ship. To sink the American carrier USS Eisenhower, you would need from 5 to 100 warheads, Forbes noted. At the same time, the article noted that the greatest risk to the ship is fire, not sinking. Based on historical data, it is known that the US Navy lost five large aircraft carriers in World War II and only one of them was sunk. 
It does not take a large amount of explosives to start a fire. Thus, the publication cited the example of the destroyed Russian missile cruiser Moskva. Most recently, Ukraine hit the Russian cruiser Moskva with two Neptune missiles. At over 9,000 tons, according to the cube root rule, it would have taken over 900 kilograms of explosives to sink the Moskva or about six Neptunes with 150 kilograms of warhead. Again, an uncontrolled fire broke out and some speculated that stored ammunition may have ignited. The Russian Defense Ministry said the cruiser was damaged, but it was being towed to port and sank the next day in bad weather. Given the damage the fire caused, it is possible that only one missile hit the right place to start the fire that destroyed the Moskva, the article explained. Forbes emphasized that it is not the size of the flying warhead that determines the damage, but the risk that the stored ammunition will become a self-destruct charge.